i runga i te ingoa te atua, te matua, te tama, me te wairua tapu. Amine. E te whanua te karaiti, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of Christ. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, confident that we share in Christ's victory over death and live with him forever in God. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this celebration of Easter Vigil, this holy night when we remember Christ's resurrection. Welcome to all of you who are joining us to celebrate these great mysteries of our faith. Our focus today in our service in first part will be on light, on Paschal candle, which reminds us of the light of Christ risen. Then we will turn to the readings from the scriptures, primarily to the reading from the book of Exodus, which reminds us of the salvation of God's people from the slavery in Egypt, which is a model prototype of Christ who saves all people, all peoples through the waters of baptism and bringing them to the eternal life. Then we will also renew our baptismal vows and remind ourselves that through the baptism we are undividedly united with Jesus Christ, our Savior. And finally, we are going to pray that Christ, who is always with us, in a mystical way can be united with us through the spiritual communion in this period when even our greatest celebrations are deprived from the celebration of the Eucharist, the central sacrament of our faith. We all share this deprivation. We, your clergy, together with you, dear people of God, and we are praying for the joyful moment when we will gather around Christ's table, recognizing him again in word and sacrament present among us. Until then, we journey together, recognizing him in the events of our life, in our daily life, in our prayer, and in his constant presence with us now. We turn to Paschal candle, which is the symbol of risen Christ, and which will be with us during this whole Paschal season, united with us at every service. After Easter tide, we will light it for baptisms and for funerals, reminding that all our beginnings and endings are in Jesus Christ. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all times belong to Christ and all ages. To him be power and glory through every age forever. Amen. By the holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Redeemer guard and keep us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Rejoice, all creation, let the heavenly chorus sing. 
Jesus Christ, our light is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor. The light of Christ will warm our autumn night. Christ has conquered, glory fills you. Darkness will vanish forever. Rejoice, O Church of God, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord is here, God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices, we should praise you, the eternal God, and your firstborn, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Christ is the true Passover Lamb, who at this feast has set your faithful people free. This is the night when you saved the people of Israel from their slavery in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when the pillar of fire brought light to your wandering people. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from gloom and are restored to grace and grow together in fullness of life. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Night truly blessed, when heaven is wedded to earth and we are reconciled with God. Therefore, Holy God, in the joy of this night, Accept our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept this Easter candle, a flame divided but undimmed, a pillar of fire that glows to your honor, O God. Let it mingle with the lights of heaven, and continue burning to lighten the darkness of this night. May the morning star find this flame still burning among us. Christ is that morning star who rises to shed your peaceful light on all creation. Christ is now alive and glorified with you forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, our solemn vigil has begun. 
as we await the risen Christ, let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, recalling how God saved the children of Israel in ages past, and in the fullness of time sent God's Son to be our Redeemer. Let this be a time of watchfulness. May the Holy Spirit keep us ready to welcome the coming of the risen one. In this holy night, we usually listen about many wonderful deeds in the history of your chosen people. Today, we are centering our thoughts around Passover, which commemorates the salvation of the people of Israel from the Egyptian slavery. Christ, our Passover, is, the, is our Redeemer, leading us from the slavery of sin through the waters of baptism into the joys of promised land. Let our journey through the desert with the people of God strengthen us in our commitment to Christ. Let us hear the reading from the book of Exodus. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray that God will give freedom to his enslaved people. God of steadfast love, by the power of your mighty arm, you delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, giving us a sign of salvation through the waters of baptism. 
grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Savior Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Let us hear the words of the second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed. And we might no longer be enslaved to sin, for whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Praise and glory to God. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, there came to the tomb 
taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Word. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear friends in Christ, at the final at the Karaiti, it is a joyful night, most joyful of all nights. It is a night of Christ's Passover, night in which passage from death to life happened, a passage from darkness to light, a passage from grave to the ends of the earth. This holy celebration of Easter Vigil is mother of all liturgies. It is the central celebration of the Paschal Mysteries, which celebrate suffering, death, and resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. This is the night in which our liturgy dramatizes in a special way the importance of symbols. Nothing is usually left out. We have fire, procession, candles, incense, holy water, bells, loud organs, and magnificent choir. There is nothing left to imagination for all of our senses. The lengthy series of readings reminds us of mighty acts of liberation and help in which people of God, Israel, experience God's presence in their midst. For us Christians, the death and resurrection of Jesus is culmination, the high point of that journey. And yet, this year, all of that is suddenly gone. No drama, but bare simplicity here in my lounge at the table, which I usually also use for dining. As there are no gatherings, no solemn celebrations, just isolated priests with various technical skills trying to do their best to stay connected with the people entrusted to them to journey together the Christian path. American poet, Caroline Winfrey Gillette, wrote a hymn for this Easter, for Easter for this year. And I wish to share it with you today, this evening. She writes, this Easter celebration is not like ones we have known. We pray in isolation, we sing the hymns alone. We're distant from our neighbors, from worship leaders too. No flowers grace the chancel to set a festive mood. No gathered choirs are singing, no banners lead the way. 
O God of love and promise, where's joy this Easter day? With sanctuaries empty, may homes become the place we ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. Our joy won't come from worship that's in a crowded room, but from the news of women who saw the empty tomb. Our joy comes from disciples who ran with haste to see, who heard that Christ is risen and then by grace believed. In all the grief and suffering, may we remember, remember well, Christ suffered crucifixion and faced the powers of hell. Each Easter bears the promise. Christ rose that glorious day. Now nothing in creation can keep your love away. We thank you that on Easter, your church is blessed to be a scattered, faithful body that's doing ministry in homes and in the places of help and healing too. We live the Easter message by gladly serving you. I do believe that these Caroline's words really summarize well how I feel about Easter this year. Though I won't share with congregation words of the Easter homily this year by St. John Chrysostom, I am reminded of the core of our celebrations. Our celebrations are about resurrection. That resurrection happened without gathered congregation. There were not many there, and even those who were, they ran away. There was running to and from the tomb. There were encounters, moments when the dear ones didn't recognize each other. There was excitement and competition in running. There was fear. And yet, in the midst of that is risen Christ. This year might be a blessing as we removed most of the destruction which we usually have. What we see is the bare minimum. The organ can't be heard. The nose cannot smell the incense. We are left with moments of silence and reflection, with the silence of the grave that is empty. And it is good to remain in that silence a bit. It is message of the Christian faith. The resurrection of Christ is concentrated in this moment, in this event of the resurrection of Christ. We are, we are reminded that no matter what we do, the resurrection happens. I saw a few days ago a lament of a person in social media. What will happen this year? Our churches are closed, our services are canceled, there are no priests around, there is no communion. Where will be our Easter? And while this lament does remind of the dramatic events of the Old Testament when the temple was demolished and people were taken into the slavery, we are not at that kind of situation, really. And we are reminded that God never abandoned the chosen people, and God never abandons us. Easter is still here. Easter is still happening. Easter is here in your heart. And if you listen to it and try to recognize it, you will celebrate it well. Maybe we need just some fine tuning and see it and recognize it. These days, our Jewish friends celebrate the days of Pesach, the Passover. Of course, we wish to our dear friends from Beit Shalom Synagogue and Auckland Hebrew congregation, Hag Pesach Sameach, happy day of Passover. One of my Jewish friends told me as she was preparing for these celebrations, I never thought that I would be so active and busy in this time of isolation. I did agree with her as I shared the same experience. 
and this might be a symbol of our celebrations. Though all might seem calm and quiet, there is so much happening behind the scenes. I feel blessed with so many contacts, conversations and chats I had over the last two weeks. So many of you are included and interacted in our staying together as the community of those who try to live the way of Christ. This leads me, of course, to my third point. We, as a church of God, continue our being. Caroline in her poem said, in homes and in the places of help and healing too, we leave the Easter message by gladly serving you. They're the message of hope and ministry we have. We are not close to ourselves only. We might be looking inwards, discovering the silence, but realizing our work, connections, ministry, all that we do together is continuation of the church's work. Some people might even sometimes struggle, argue and disagree with the church. But this is also work and ministry of the church. We build our relationships, we build our connections, we stay together. So dear friends, may your Easter this year be blessed with a special blessing as you celebrate it in a special way. May this celebration be seen as an opportunity to ponder into these mysteries in a different, deeper way. Resurrection happened, but even more, it happens every time when we decide for good, for justice, for recognizing Christ present around us in our situations, in people around us. Very often as individuals and as church, we bear the scars of our failure, but they are with us to help us to persevere on that journey. In this way, we will continue bringing the presence of Christ's resurrection and be the angelic heralds, the apostolic proto-ecclesial voice of Mary Magdalene to all. So in this spirit, I wish you all that you have happy celebration of Christ's resurrection. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. 
Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. On the day when the apostles first preached the gospel of Christ's resurrection, Peter urged his hearers, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus the Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God may call. Let us proclaim, dear brothers and sisters, the Christian faith into which we were baptized and in which we live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who makes the world? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, God, for your love in all creation, especially for your gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. We thank you for your covenant with your people, Israel. Through the Red Sea waters, you led them to freedom in the Promised Land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Through the deep waters of death, Jesus fulfilled his baptism. He died to set us free and was raised to be exalted Lord of all. We thank you that through the waters of baptism, you cleanse us, renew us by your spirit and raise us to new life. In the new covenant, we are made members of your church and share in your eternal kingdom. Now sanctify this water, we pray, by the power of the Spirit. May those who are born again by water and the Spirit continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, our God, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Those who are baptized are called to worship and serve God. From the beginning, believers have continued in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. 
Will you commit yourself to this life? I will with God's help. Will you forgive others as you are forgiven? I will with God's help. Will you seek to love your neighbor as yourself and strive for peace and justice? I will with God's help. Will you accept the cost of following Jesus Christ in your daily life and work? I will with God's help. With the whole church, will you proclaim by word and action the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptized in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. With exaltation and joy, we proclaim that Christ is risen and that through him we can now offer our prayers to our God. For the community that is called the church, We are an Easter people, and we ask God's blessing on the church. We pray for our Diocese of Auckland and our Bishop Ross. In Tetai Tokera, we pray for Bishop Kito. We pray for Christians all over the world, especially remembering on this most holy night, Christians in Palestine and Israel, in the whole Holy Land. May our witness to the resurrection be a source of joy and hope in a world of despair and pain. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For new believers everywhere, Easter night is usually time when many are being baptized and they are joining the community of church. We pray for those who will be baptized in the coming weeks, those who are preparing to join the church. May they know the peace that only God can give. May they always be faithful to the baptismal promises they have made. And may their commitment remind us also of our promises, which we have renewed this evening. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For a deeper faith in the risen Christ. By the death and rising of Jesus, sin has been destroyed and no longer has power over us. May we live no longer as slaves of sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and for all the peoples around the world in this time when they're struggling with coronavirus, when many are in hospitals and ill. We pray for the peoples of the world who are living in fear, who are living in isolation. We pray for our nation, New Zealand, praying for all of us who are making this society. Help all those who are working in essential services. Be close to them and protect them with your presence. Be with all people who are living in this society with us so that together by being responsible, taking good care for one another, we contribute and protect each one of us, especially those who are most vulnerable. May the joy of Christ's resurrection be with all who are struggling and who are doubting this evening. Risen Christ, 
hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, those who have died because of COVID-19, for those who have died who are dear to us and whom we remember with fondness. Christ's resurrection has delivered us from death. May Christ welcome all those who have died into the divine heavenly kingdom, where we are all hoping to join one day. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Creating and redeeming God, our mercy endures forever in the risen Christ. We bless you and thank you for this holy night. Help us be faithful witnesses to the risen Christ. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you and also with you. At this moment, we would usually exchange peace with one another. So may Christ's peace and joy of Christ's resurrection be with you in all your bubbles, wherever you are. Christ is risen. May peace be with you. All our celebrations culminate in the celebration of Eucharist, in Holy Communion. As I have said, said before, this year we still, though we celebrate, feel pain because this central sacrament of our faith cannot be celebrated. Christ's body and blood cannot be shared among us. Of course, in order to celebrate Eucharist, there has to be community and technically uh, I as a priest could be celebrating Eucharist with others, other two people who are living with me here in my bubble. But there would still be distance between us here who will be taking part in the communion and all of you who are following us in social media. And after long reflection and really painful discernment, uh, 
guided by our Bishop Ross and reflection of our church, we are not celebrating Eucharist. We are refraining in solidarity with all of you who cannot receive Holy Communion. We are joining you in this night. We are not receiving this sacrament in order to show that even in this Eucharistic fast, when we are not receiving communion, we are walking together. We are sharing together in, that, in this division. But we are also praying to deepen our faith and recognize Christ present in our midst in so many ways. In fact, the resurrection itself wouldn't be so full and it wouldn't be probably meaningful to all of us if we wouldn't see Christ present in many other ways. So at this stage, I would like to invite us all to pause for a moment as we are going into spiritual communion. Our prayer book says at page 729, when people who desire to receive the Holy Communion are unable to do so for any other reason, their desire and such prayers as they are able to offer ensure that they do spiritually receive the body and blood of Christ. So let us pause as we invite Christ to come into our hearts. Join me praying together the following prayer, if you wish. Loving God, in union with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries, gather to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear son, Jesus Christ. We offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though we cannot taste the bread of heaven and drink the cup of life, we pray that you will unite us with all the baptized and with your son who showed us how to love to the end. Come Lord Jesus, dwell in us and send your Holy Spirit that we may be filled with your presence. Jesus, as the hem of your garment, touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body. So may the soul of us, your people, be healed. For though we cannot receive you in the sacrament, we can, through this offering of our prayers, receive you in our hearts. Grant us this, you who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen.
much for joining us this evening for these celebrations. This is only the beginning. We have started this joyful festival. Please join us also tomorrow at 10 o'clock as Dean N officiates uh, at our Easter Day Liturgy of the Word uh, and Bishop Ross shares his Easter sermon. May God bless you and please extend our best wishes from all of us in the cathedral to your dear ones, to those who are not with you, but with whom you are in contact through phone or other ways. And may this joy of Christ give you strength and hope for the days to come. And may this joy also stay with your dear ones wherever they may be. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. God of hope, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.